Hi everybody, welcome back or hello, hey, welcome to my channel, my channel. Today we are here with another very fun video. So last month I actually did this video where I had random actions decide the TBR and the books I read in January. Now I did this because there was a lot of books that I had for my library that I wanted to read but I couldn't decide which ones to read and I needed to bring them back and I had so much success with January I read so many books I read all the books on my TBR or DNF them but that will be <laughs> that will be next week's video okay so I just I wanted to do this again I had so much fun last time I wanted to come back I wanted to see what books here from my library got picked of course all of these are ones that I want to read but like Let's have Google like pick which ones I'm reading and re pick them for me, Google. Pick them for me. So, we have some new books. All of these are new. Well, Zero Fail was here last month, but listen, I'm not giving up on this book. It's really good, but also really heavy to hold, and there's a lot of information in there, so it's very slow going. But I'm not giving up on her. Otherwise, everything else on this is different than last month. So we have some new books and I'm just really excited. And speaking of new books, last week I actually posted a book haul and book shopping video. And so I have added those to the cup that I get to pick out at the end of this video. So I'm very excited. Let's just get into this and yeah, okay, let's do this. So this month I only have seven books behind me to peruse from and there are some ones that I should read before the others excluding Zero Fail that I should have finished months ago but haven't. Um, so let's just see what Google generates. We're going to do three of these and then we're going to do two of the books that I own because I actually am going to be doing another TBR at the end of this month for a vacation TBR and then I'll have to do a March TBR. We're going to have like a lot of TBRs coming towards y'all but I just think the TBRs like with games are fun to watch, so I hope you guys and fun to play. So I hope you are interested in them. But okay, book one is one. Okay, so this is Night of the Witch by Sarah Roche and Beth Revis. So this is a book that Lindsay my favorite booktuber from She Is Booked and Busy actually bought because of how, how gorgeous the spine is. And my Libby app had it, so I put it on my Libby, and then my library got a physical copy. And I actually prefer physical copies over ebooks a majority of the time. So I knew I wanted to be put on hold for this, and I just returned the original book that was here today, so having this one was good to fill it in. And this is basically about a witch, a secret witch, and a witch hunter. It says, Fritzy is a witch, the lone survivor of a brutal attack on her coven. She is determined to find her only remaining family member and bring the Hexenjägers, zealot witch hunters, to justice for the lives they ended. Look at that, Lindsay. I said it without any struggle. To do this, she will need to take down their leader, the merciless and agonamic, egg okay, well I can't say that word, uh, commandment, commandment Deeker Kirch. Otto is a Hexenjäger, but that's just his cover. Years ago, the Hexenjägers burned his innocent mother alive, and he has been plotting his revenge against the people who tore apart his family ever since. And now the time has come for them to pay for what they've done. So this is a story where both of these characters get thrown into a situation together. It's told in first person. I'm not a first person girly, but it's told in first person. I'm pretty sure it's a little bit of a, like, a romanticy. And I'm actually... I'm kind of excited to read this. It's not if I had a, if I could peruse these and pick them myself, this would not have been one that I picked. But I am excited to have a good reason to read it. With book one done, let's do book two, three. Okay, huh? Really? Okay, so book three is the gutter. There, yeah, three. Y'all see it? The gutter prayer by Gareth. Han Rahan. So this is a book that I added to my Goodreads TBR simply for one reason. Somebody gave it five stars. I, was, I saw one person give this book five stars and I was like, oh, okay. And I have 
no idea what this book is even about. But uh, I saw my library had it one day while shelf reading, which is when we read the labels to make sure the books are in the correct locations. And I was like, hey, I've heard of you. And then I brought it home, and now it's on my February TBR. So this says, enter a city of saints and thieves. The city of Guerdon stands eternal, a refuge from the war that rages beyond its borders. But in the ancient tunnels deep beneath its streets, a mag... A a malevolent power be has begun to stir. The fate of the city rests in the hands of three thieves. They alone stand against the coming darkness. As conspiracies unfold and secrets are revealed, their friendship will be tested to the limit. If they fail, and all will be lost, and the streets of Grildon will run with blood. I like thieves. That's like one of my favorite type of characters to follow in books. And this, it's a big, it's like a chunky fantasy book, so... I have high hopes. So far, out of the two books we've pulled, neither of them have gotten me super excited. Yes, I did want to read them, but they're not ones that like that are just like, ugh, I don't want to read you. So let's hope that book three does it. Four! I'll take it! I'll take it! Yes! Okay, so this is Dark Archives. See the four? See it? Ciao. Dark Archives by Megan Rosenblum. Now, this is a nonfiction book. It is a librarian's investigation into the science and history of books bound in human skin. So, basically, how did this book come upon my radar, right? Well, Jesse the Reader, like, yeah, that Jesse the Reader, I have been following him on Goodreads since the dawn of my reading era in 2017. And he made a reappearance to Goodreads to give this book five stars, and I have not seen from him since. And this man made a return from the dead to give this book a five-star rating, and um, I think that says something about the, the quality of this novel. So this is truly just talking about the history of, you guessed it, books bound in human skin. Yeah, it's literally what it says on the tin. Um, it says, on bookshelves around the world, surrounded by ordinary books bound in paper and leather, rest other volumes of distinctly strange and grisly sort. These bound in human skin. Would you know if you held it in your hands? This seems so fascinating and crazy, and no, I don't think I know if I was holding a book with human skin in my hands, okay? Uh, not if it doesn't have distinct uh, rotting flesh smell, I wouldn't. So I have, like, I don't know what this is about. It's about 200 pages, so it's a pretty short read compared to the other two fantasy books on my TBR, but I am just so excited to read this. I just, I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you, Random Number Generator, for giving me one that I am excited about. So yeah, I'm excited for this. It just seems crazy. I hope I love it as much as, much as Jesse the Reader did. So stick around for my February wrap-up to find out if I did enjoy it just as much. But yeah, Dark Archives, book numero tre. So these are the books that Google decided I was reading. Now, will these all be here next time? Probably. So, let's do two out of this cup. The blue are books that I have bought in 2024. Pink is from before 2024, and green is the books that I have on my Kindle. So, I really want some blue books, but yeah, and if I pull green out of the thing and I don't have it on my Kindle anymore, aka it's from Libby, then we'll pull a different one. So, this one. Please be blue. Ah, oh, darn it. Powerless. Okay. Powerless. I wanted to say Powerless by Elsie Silver, but no. This is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. So this, another pretty big fantasy book. But this is one that really blew up in 2023. I think it came out in 2023. A lot of people followed Lauren Roberts on TikTok as she wrote this book. And from what I've heard, it is a book that reminds you very heavily of The Hunger Games. Or, from one YouTuber who did not like this book, it is a Hunger Games ripoff. And that is all I know about it. I know it's like a fantasy romance, of course it is. So let's see. The elites have possessed powers for decades, gifted to them by the plague, while those born ordinary are just that, banished from the kingdom of 
Illa, and shunned from society. No one knows this better than Peyton Gray. And I, I think I said in my video where I hauled this that I hate that I don't like Peyton. I'm like, why Peyton? Why Peyton? Anyway, Peyton Gray, an ordinary posing as a psychic to blend in with the elites. But when she unwittingly saves one of Illa's princes, Kai Azur, she's thrown into the purging trials, a brutal competition showcasing the elites' power. If the trials and the opponents within them don't kill her, the prince she's fighting feelings for will if he discovers what Peyton is. Completely ordinary. Now, first off, Kai ain't gonna kill you, sweetie. Like, we already know Kai ain't gonna kill you. And secondly, I have heard such high praise for Kai. I have heard people reading this and they're like, ah, this is to die for. And I actually added this to my uh, Goodreads TBR list when Sarah Caroli read this in her reading this video and then I read a five star and she was just gushing about this book and about the characters and especially about Kai so for book number one out of the thing a more recent purchase too I bought this like in uh November of 2023 so this is definitely not a TBR veteran I will say that okay y'all I really want a blue book I really want a blue book okay I feel like I looked. Okay, I looked, I looked, I looked, I looked. Do some spins. I dropped one. Doesn't mean that's the one I'm picking. I really want a blue book. Okay, I'm going to do this one. No. <laughs> Nor, this isn't fun anymore. I really do not want to read this in February, y'all. No. Uh, you guys, I really don't want to read this in February. I got The Atlas 6 by Olivia Blake. Okay, let me get it. Okay, can I just see what the two I dropped were real quick? Uh, Empire of Silence giant sci-fi book would have definitely have loved that more and I could have also got an icebreaker a cute 400 page romance yeah I could have got okay well cute that's not what it is but like I could have gotten that and instead I'm getting atlas six so as you saw I pulled this out of the jar now <laughs> Okay, The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake is like the it girl of TikTok in June 2023. Like this book was originally self-published. It got published by a big time publisher, blew up. Olivia Blake is like the queen now, right? And I mean, I've read, okay, I've read, I've read... I've only read 32 pages in this book. I've also read the first 32 pages of this book in Swedish. Um, and I didn't necessarily dislike the writing style, but Olivia Blake is just so wordy. She writes how I imagine I speak. And it is incredibly, like, annoying. Like, it's drawn out. Stop it. But this book is a, about a, it's like dark academia school book. So it says secrets, betrayal, seduction, power. Welcome to the Alexandrian society. Each decade, only the six most uniquely talented magicians are selected to earn a place in Alexandrian society, the foremost secret society in the world. The chosen will secure a life of power and prestige beyond their wildest dreams. But at what cost? Each of the Six newest recruits has their reasons for accepting the society's elusive invitation, even if it means growing closer than they could have imagined to their most dangerous enemies or risking the unforgivable betrayal from the most trusted allies. They will fight tooth and nail for the right to join the ranks of the Alexandrians, even if it means they won't survive the year. So that's what this is about. It sounds good, right? But 
I had to read like the I had to read the first chapter a couple of times trying to get into it and then obviously it's not even marked as currently reading on my Goodreads so yeah I do say I love the cover I love this cover and it has two other books not that I could care about them I, f I just feel it in my soul that this is going to be like a two and a half or three star read and hey maybe I will be surprised but I just feel deep in my blood that this is going to be a two and a half three star read so that's why I'm not excited for it okay so these are all of the books that have been randomly decided for me to read in the month of February however this is not the entire stack and I know I'm a college student with a part-time job and a YouTube channel, okay, a couple of YouTube channels, and I already have more than this on my TBR. Yeah, I'm, I'm still running with that January juice. So let me tell you guys about the other books that I want to read in February. So first things first, my church does, I believe, a monthly, like, book club thing, and I did read January's pick, Attributes of God. You can see my opinions on that in my uh, next week's video. But this month, I don't know what book it is yet as of filming, but that is one that I want to add to my TBR. It's going to roughly be about 100 pages. Uh, they don't pick books bigger than 100 pages because, well, they're not like a, a library. They're not a library. They're a church. And pe not everybody who goes to church reads. So that's one book that I want to add if I have the cover by time of editing. Here's a picture of it. Otherwise, you and I are both in for a mystery. Okay, different angle, different shirt, different day because I'm editing the video right now and I don't really like and I have kind of changed my plans when it comes to this next book. So I just want to refilm that section. Um, I got an arc for the sequel to my favorite book of last year, which is this beautiful thing, The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. Yeah, your girl has an arc to this book, the sequel, which is The Book That Broke the World. Now, originally I said that I wanted to reread this book and the sequel, like read them in tandem. However, I did start rereading the first book, and I just remember way too much about it to reread the entire thing and then go into the sequel. So instead, I'm just going to read reread a couple of the, the last chapters and then go into the sequel bright-eyed with high hopes that it doesn't let me down like all of my other past anticipatory books. So that is one book I want to read, and this book doesn't come out until April. I I already pre-ordered a physical copy, but I got a pre an arc, and I was just like, ah! obviously I need to reread, I need to read that. And then I also have an arc that comes out in February, like February 27th, I believe, which is for Tomorrow's Children. I don't really know what this is about. It's another sci-fi book. I imagine it's probably going to be roughly the same size as this book, but this comes out February 27th. So if I have the time, I would really like to read the book before it comes out and give my rating and stuff like that. Um, I gotta make Net Galley think I'm a good person to give books to since I just got approved for an arc of the sequel to my favorite book of all time. So, or not of all time, but of last year. So, yeah. And I didn't do an outro, so... Thank you for watching. I love y'all. I'll see you guys. <laughs> see you guys in my next video. Adios, arrivo, salut, hey, do, and goodbye. Mwah.